Next week I elaborated on how I recently got my dream car, I cleaned it up, packed some things, and now I'm ready for the road. As summer got closer after finishing my first year in college, all I could think about was getting in my car and see what the road had in store for me. With a little fear of not knowing what lies ahead of me, my curiosity takes me to seek the unknown and finally take the first steps that I've always wanted to do. So at first, I kind of had second thoughts if I should go or not. The reason being is because, well, I'm going by myself. What if this happens? Is it safe? What's my game plan? These are all questions I had asked myself before leaving on this road trip. My name is Jay, and this is how my trip really went down. My initial game plan was to really drive as far as I could by myself, and that was to New Mexico, which is like 11 hours from Texas, which is where I live including breaks and rest. Since it was a bit of a stretch for being my first time of traveling solo for the first time, I decided to keep it more local and after searching for quite some time, I landed upon Enchanted Rock. That's one big rock. And in this national park, you could stay camping. And it wasn't really that far, it was only an hour and a half up to two hours of driving time. Now in the original video I spoke about how it's a learning experience and how I've always wanted to do this. So sorry guys. Sorry guys. Now in the original video I spoke about how it's a learning experience and I've always wanted to do this and I wanted to use this as an opportunity to grow as a person. One major reason I was able to make this mini project in this season is because right now I'm currently in summer after completing my first year of college of getting my associate's degree in filmmaking and I want to fully enjoy summer and do things that I've never done before. So there I was, packing some stuff, saying goodbye, and taking a full on twin mattress and putting on the back of my car. And a fact about this clip that I didn't show in the original video is how the mattress didn't want to fit. So I literally took so long to put the mattress inside the back of the car. Guys, if you guys hear a lot of noise right now, I'm so sorry because there's uh, a meeting downstairs. So I'm sorry if, if, if I'm sorry, but after driving halfway until my destination, I recorded this part of the sequence, and I remember how I was telling myself that if I don't take this shot now, I won't be able to, since this was the last rest stop of the whole trip. Well, why film this? Uh, I don't know. Just why not? It's an idea and just, uh, and that's how I wanted to present it. But here comes one of the problems I had in this trip. I had a gallon of water, but only ended up using half of it because I wasn't able to carry it the whole time and I had to leave the rest of my stuff inside the car. Oh, let me explain. My initial plan was to stay at my campsite and have easy access to my car. But it turns out that it was actually a two mile walk from the parking station to the campsite. And at this parking station is where I had to leave all of my baggage and I had to hike all the way to the campsite. And so I just had to reinvent myself. I literally carried all of my bags and just went for it. Uh, I tried for it not to be so heavy, but it still ended up hurting my back a little bit. I probably should have planned it a little bit better. I remember reading that I was gonna be near the campsites, but it turns out I didn't read right. So, you know, lesson, lesson learned. The second encounter was not picking the right time of day to do this hike. I chose the evening, which is probably the worst time that somebody can hike. And in the evening is usually the hottest time of the day, having the sun directly above you. Now the good thing is that I did have half a gallon of water and I took many breaks in between the session of my hike. So the trip was on a Wednesday morning and nobody was really going to be camping on a Wednesday night. I'm not sure what I expected, although I did see some campers outside but below the summit. And that's where I decided to relocate. All I had to do was literally walk all the way down from the two mile walk that I had to do 
and walk all the way down from the campsite to the parking station. At this point, I was very hungry and decided to eat some food and snacks that I had brought with me. I ended up watching my show until the sun was finally going down and after the sun was finally setting and seeing and catching the beautiful flares that the sun was giving, I decided to climb the summit. I decided to climb and catch the sunset. I decided to climb the summit of the Enchanted Rock and catch the sunset. This is something I didn't show in the original video either. After catching the sunset, I went off on a run to HEB to grab some snacks for the night and the next morning when I head back. Once I arrived back to the park, I was finally able to relax and sleep in my car while having my windows down and covering them by extra shirts that I had brought with me. So that way I didn't have my car on and I didn't have mosquitoes or insects or spiders or roaches, I don't know, just <laughs> in terms of the weather and climate at night, at first it was very humid, but then later on it just got cooler. So I'm not gonna lie, it was actually a very good sleep. And now for the grand reveal. I woke up at 6.30 in the morning just to catch the sun rise at the summit and see if it was worth it. Good morning guys. Was it worth it? <laughs> 